Growing up as a kid, I was fortunate enough to receive presents on my birthdays, and I absolutely loved it. So when one of my uncles told me that his gift for me on my 13th was a virtual present, I was like, mm, thank you. What's a bike coin? Bitcoin, was it? Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Well, this kid made some money, huh? But don't be jealous yet. The Bitcoin didn't come with the gift of foresight, so I sold it in 2015 and bought a PlayStation. A good old PlayStation instead of $13,000. What was I thinking, right? I mean, I guess 13-year-olds don't know much about money after all. So you can imagine how shocked I was when the Bitcoin price exploded. However, what really struck me was the extent of how this potential change could affect my world, our world. The major potential is not in Bitcoin per se. Let me put it this way. What makes Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more of their friends special is the revolutionary development behind it, the blockchain technology. So here's what I found out. Blockchain is basically a distributed and shared digital ledger that records any exchange of value. It doesn't have to be money, anything of value be it medical records, uh, property, or even votes. And a block is called a block because it, is, it essentially is a chunk of transactions in that ledger. And this block of data once created is added to the existing chain of blocks using cryptography, in the case of Bitcoin, every 10 minutes or so. Thus, block chain, get it? And here's what's so unique about it. First, the chain structure of the database makes it completely transparent and unchangeable. Second, because it is a distributed ledger and the users have the responsibility of agreeing upon the ownership of all kinds of values, it cannot be easily taken down or corrupted. A simple concept, but truly ingenious. With these unique characteristics, the blockchain could replace today's central database systems. The blockchain is a disruptive technology that can significantly impact any type of value exchanging industry. Legal, medical, personal records, private networks, taxation, voting, you name it. But you see, I'm not here to give you all a lecture on blockchain. Surprise. Because to be honest, when I first learned about all of this, it really didn't click with me because I thought, if blockchain is so good, convenient, unhackable, and transparent, why haven't we all jumped on it? The technology already exists, so why hasn't society just taken it? And I eventually did figure out that the thing is, it's just not that simple. I think a lot of people are like me in that they are cautious of change and resist it when given in high overwhelming dosages. The problem is that the blockchain's most important aspect, decentralization, requires a lot of change. Let's think about this for a moment. Centralization versus decentralization. There is no doubt that we are living in a centralized world, one that we are extremely accustomed to. We have centralized governments, of course, banks, corporations, schools, and many more. Even the recent shared economy companies like Uber and Airbnb are at best centralized middlemen. So why did we need all these centralized authorities? I mean, there are many factors to it, but I think the biggest reason is because we humans, as economic creatures, are self-interested and often mistrustful. Meaning that one, we don't trust each other in exchanging values, and two, we don't even trust ourselves of being able to keep our assets. Humans always needed someone else to verify, protect, and manage their economic activities, someone they can rely on. Thus, centralized institutions. In a way, we chose to delegate our responsibility as well as authority over our economic lives to these institutions, and essentially we're like, okay, you do the nitty gritty for us in exchange for power. However, here comes blockchain technology, 
threatening to revolutionize this cozy foundation of centralization that we've built up. You see, blockchain tech takes the, takes the control of all valuable information away from these institutions and puts it into the hands of the end users to be managed cooperatively and, and publicly. It's not uncontrollable anarchy, but like I said, it's a distributed ledger that is driven by the users. Blockchain's decentralization and consensus-based verification would allow us to exchange any type of value safely, peer-to-peer, -peer, without any third-party interference. This technology would allow us to finally achieve a truly decentralized trust-based economy for the first time in history. Decentralized trust forged by cold-blooded rational computer codes. In short, we may no longer need the authorities and agents that we've relied on for hundreds of years, at least for them to manage our economic lives. So if you think about it, it surely is a profound change, not only to our economy, but also to our society. But as with every new change, it will bring with it some measure of trepidation. Spotify, one of the biggest streaming service providers, is one good example of centralization. While enjoying its power over artists, Spotify has, cre has created a lot of conflicts regarding royalties and unfair compensation. In fact, they were sued a few weeks ago for unpaid royalties of a tiny amount of $1.6 billion. Here, blockchain technology can be a game changer, allowing users to directly pay the artists. So at first glance, blockchain technology can achieve a fairer, more honest society. But here's the problem. It all sounds so easy and simple, but in reality, it's not like that. A change to blockchain will create an unhappy shift in the roles of centralized middlemen like Spotify. Many businesses like Spotify would have to adapt to this emerging technology, and it would most certainly take a while for them to change from this deeply centralized world of value exchanges. And there is another player that is often ignored, the users. The best example I can think of is my mother. When we had a conversation about Bitcoin, my mom really loved the idea of reduced fees, delays, transparency, and all that. However, she was simply reluctant to change from the traditional banking system she was used to. She was uncomfortable with the fact that she would have to take full responsibility of her financial activities without the protection of her banks. And I believe that she is not alone in this trap. I myself can relate to her. I wasn't going to wake up the next day and suddenly hand over the keys to my wallet to the waiting public. Change at any level is frightening, and our human nature conditions us to stay in our comfort zone. Now I finally get why we're not jumping on blockchain. Decentralization will create opportunities, yes, but also discomfort and conflicts. Our reluctance to change from a deeply rooted pattern of life is the single greatest obstacle to, to blockchain. So, what does this mean for us as 21st century citizens? If I may offer my humble opinion, it means three things. First, it is inevitable that the use of blockchain tech will increase. Remember, convenient, unhackable, and transparent. It's just too good to be ignored. Second, inevitability does not mean problem-free. And tradition just doesn't change in one night. But if teenage me did it, I have much faith in humanity that it will eventually find its own way to grow with this technology to meet these problems. That being said, how we get to that point is up to us, the 21st century citizens. And we must ask ourselves, what kind of world do we want to live in? With that question in mind, let's embrace this exciting challenge and really get the most out of blockchain. That is the great responsibility and gift given to us as 21st century citizens. Thank you.